In traditional Chinese medicine, the kidney is considered one of the most important organs because of the life force of qi that is that runs through the kidney meridian. And from a functional kinesiology perspective, it is important in our work too, because the adrenal glands sit on top of the kidneys and adrenal glands and the adrenal function is a core of what we do and what we focus on. So the kidneys are known as the minister of power, as well as the root of life. Uh, and they work at regulating the brain and playing an important role in the formation of memories and rationality, according to the Chinese. So an imbalance in the kidney meridian can often create poor memory, inability to think clearly, a real lack of energy. So there's a lack of chi that comes from the when the kidney meridian is imbalanced. And we also see because of the muscles involved in the kidney meridian that back pain uh, can also be a common complaint. So what do the kidneys do? Their main job is to cleanse the blood of toxins and transform the waste into urine. And there is also a feedback loop with the large intestine um, and particularly the ileocecal valve, which is a function in the body that we work a lot with in functional kinesiology. And actually the ileocecal valve is connected to the iliacus, which is the muscle next door. And the iliacus is connected to the kidneys. So there is this real feedback loop that happens with the kidneys and the large intestine. And they are essentially doing a very similar role of cleaning the blood of toxins. So um, often when things like hormones and toxins are being cleaned down from the body, they either go down the kidney pathway into urine or they go down the large intestine pathway to feces. So what are the muscles that we are looking at from a kidney meridian perspective? In, um, we are looking at the psoas, which is in the pelvis, and it is a muscle that actually connects the two um, parts of the body. So it connects the, the lower part of the body to the upper part of the body, and it's the only muscle that does that. The iliacus that sits next to the psoas, which is also in the pelvis, and that muscle that's linked into the ileocecal valve, and the upper trapezius, which, which is in the neck, which is here. So common imbalances in the kidney meridian, we can see things like when the kidneys aren't functioning properly, well, then we get um, a buildup of toxins or excess fluid in the body. So that would be edema, so swelling in the face or ankles, for example. High blood pressure can be a, a, a symptom of a kidney imbalance. Extreme tiredness or lethargy, this is the, the chi that I was talking about earlier. Persistent headaches, um, this can very much come from an imbalanced upper trapezius. Uh, and also a lack of hydration can cause headaches. Uh, ear and eye symptoms, uh, including tinnitus, and this is again the upper trapezius. The, um, the, this muscle is very much connected to the eyes and ears. And so when we have a client who's coming into our clinic and they are complaining of an eye or ear imbalance, then we will be working with the upper trapezius model uh, muscle and the kidney meridian. And lower back pain because the psoas in the pelvis that connects, uh, that, that stabilizes the pelvis, when that muscle gets too tight, then we can see a constriction that happens in the lower back. So a tightening that happens or a collapsing if that muscle becomes weak. So there is what balancing the psoas can really help with that lower back pain. How do we balance the kidney meridian? In functional kinesiology, we use the bees, biochemical, emotional, electrical, and structural. This is our toolkit. Biochemically, we are ensuring there is an effective toxin elimination and ensuring proper hydration. So we, from the very beginning, from the foundation training, we learn a hydration muscle test to ensure that the client is hydrated and absorbing water effectively. And we really drive home the importance of drinking water for good health. Uh, so that's very much from a foundation perspective. When we move into the practitioner training, we're looking at supplementation. 
And supplements that we can use to support the kidney meridian include omega-3, which helps the absorption of water. We also work with adaptogens. So if we, when we start to look at the emotional perspective of the kidneys, when we look at the five element, the kidney belongs to the water element, which is to do with fear and anxiety. So this is where adaptogens and, and minerals like magnesium can play a really great role in supporting the kidney function from an emotional perspective. So we'd be looking at things like ginseng or Tulsi as an adaptogen. Um, mineral balance is really important for kidney function. So not just magnesium, we'd be looking at calcium, potassium and sodium as well. And we tend to focus on that from um, a, a functional kinesiology perspective, more dietary. The calcium, magnesium, we absolutely use those as supplements in the clinic and we test those against those muscles. So coming back to the five element theory, the, the emotion of fear and anxiety. So this can manifest as weak willpower, insecurity, feeling isolated. And so when we get into the practitioner training, we've got some basic techniques that we use in the foundation training. But in the practitioner training, we go deep into the inner child work and creating safety nets and a, a safety container for clients to create in themselves, which can really reduce uh, fear and anxiety. So we don't look, a lot of therapies look at fear and anxiety as something to overcome. We, as functional kinesiologists, we look at fear and anxiety as something to embrace. It's happening for a reason. How do we embrace it? How do we work with it rather than trying to move it aside? Because whenever we try to um, overcome fear and anxiety, it tends to get bigger. So we want to, it's, we want to embrace it and work with it um, and, and really listen to it rather than trying to exclude it. Electrically, the kidney meridian is in the evening, five to seven in the evening. And what we tend to see is that people tend to, with a kidney chi imbalance, they, they tend to get tired and lethargic at this time. And the kidney meridian runs, you can see on this lesson that there's an image and also a video that shows you the kidney meridian. It starts on the, the sole of the foot, loops around the ankle and then comes up on the inside of the body to a, a, a acupuncture point called kidney 27, which is a very important uh, point for acupuncturists as well as uh, kinesiologists. It's a, a point that a lot of meridians run through and it is to do with connection with self. Uh, we tend to use it as a point that we work with a lot in different uh, balances and corrections. Structurally, uh, because of this connection with the pelvis and the neck, um, we see a bilateral connection. If the psoas is bilaterally unlocking in the pelvis, we see an imbalance happen in the neck. So there is this very much this, this uh, pelvis neck connection with the kidney. And so what we would see with a structural misalignment on the kidney meridian is neck pain is a posture where the, the say the glute, glutes stick out as the, the lower back tends to tighten. Either the psoas isn't holding the, uh, the pelvis in place properly or it's too tight and it's creating this misalignment in the pelvis. We can also see uh, because of the way the psoas um, connect, uh, controls the pelvis and it also has this knock-on effect with the legs and the feet is that people who turn their feet out can often have a psoas imbalance. It's one of the, the great things about training in kinesiology is that when you are starting to learn about gates and postures and you can watch someone walking down the street and they're turning their feet out as they walk, you can often guess that maybe they're, there's fear or anxiety going on there. Maybe they're not drinking enough water. What is going on with the psoas that has imbalance to create that, uh, that gate, that structure in, the, in, the, in their walk? So how does the kidney meridian fit into the triangle of hormonal health? So the triangle of hormonal health is the, the blood sugars, the stress and the sex hormones. So it's our spleen, uh, triple warmer and circulation sex meridian balance. And when these are out of whack, then we really do see that the kidneys become a victim of this hormonal imbalance. And so we see things like um, increased blood pressure, for example, higher toxin, uh, more uh, requirement from the kidneys to be able to detox hormones, plus the adrenal sit on top of the kidneys. So if there is high stress, then the kidneys are very much a victim of 
of what's going on from high stress or say a blood sugar imbalance. So we need to be working with the triangle if we are going to have a healthy kidney uh, balance in the meridian. So that is the, the kidney meridian.